All right, Ephesians chapter 4. Last week, um, I did the first part of this lesson. Let me just take this away. I did the first part of this lesson on um, be angry and sin not. I um, talked about righteous anger. And, um, and we've been going through this passage in Scripture here in Ephesians chapter 4, and we've been talking about more the practical things about, you know, what is the renewed mind? How does he think in the renewed mind? How does it act? And, and let's read there together from Ephesians chapter 4 and um, verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So what does the new man do? The new man, uh, the, the, the renewed mind do, the renewed mind puts on the, uh, the, the old man, uh, puts off the old man, but he puts on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And when that renewed man is put on, the renewed mind is put on the renewed man, there's certain things that he needs to, desp- that he can now take care of. This morning I spoke, spoke about um, a question that was asked to me, what happens and what do we do as a church with people that openly sin? You know, they, they, they presumptuously, openly sin, and they say, well, I'm under grace, I can carry on living like I want to. And um, we addressed that issue this morning, and you need to go listen to that issue this morning and see how do we deal and how we should deal with it, and our response should be with, uh, concerning that, okay? That's already online, I think. I think it's already on, the, on the, so don't go watch it now while you're listening to me now, okay? <laughs> But, but it's on there, and um, you know, how does the immune mind act? You know, you, know, you know, we should not obey sin. We are, we are made free from the law that we should not obey what? Sin. We should not obey sin, right? Because we're not under law, but under grace. Okay? But you don't, you, we won't know how to deal with sin if you don't know who you are, and if you don't know what Christ has done for us, if we don't know what He's done for us to the finished work and our identity that we have with Him, and we don't know those things, and we don't have not reckoned them as true, and we've not yielded to them, we wouldn't know what to do with sin. That we are dead to sin, we were not allowed to act on it. That's why we have to need, need to get the renewed mind. Now here's some things, practical things that we've been talking about. Verse 25 says, Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. The reason why we should put away lying is because we're members one of another. We should not be lying to one another. God is not, God is not a man that he should what? Lie. God doesn't lie. And if God isn't lying, you and I in Christ, for Christ's sake, we should not be lying one to another. Because that's who we are. Okay? And we talked about the various forms of lies and various, you know, there's different lies, you know. Sometimes you can withheld the truth, it could be a lie. Sometimes you can embellish the truth, it can be a lie. You know, and we talked about various, and I'm talking about the father of lies, and we talked about, you can listen to that message, it's on, on, the, on the side as well. Wherefore, verse 25, put away, uh, uh, putting, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Verse 26 says, be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. That's what we're busy talking about right now. Let him that stole steal no more. Now you think about this. Lying, anger, stealing, not working, you know, corrupt communication. Why would Paul address it if it wasn't an issue? It is an issue. Okay? And so we need to give attention to this. Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That's a verse. We'll talk about that in a verse. You know, how many times have we said things to people where the communication that comes out of our mouth is so corrupt and it doesn't bring edification. It rather breaks them down and it does not 
you know. It doesn't reprove or, or build up in meekness and gentleness. It's just corrupt communication. Verse 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Can we grieve the Holy Ghost? Yes. And we can address, how do we grieve the Holy Ghost? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. If it's not an issue in the church, if it's not an issue in the body of Christ, why address it at all? Because the renewed mind needs to know something. It's only the renewed mind that can do something about these things. It's only the renewed mind that will not know not to lie. That's not know not to, anger, to be get angry and sin not. It's the only the renewed mind that's going to know we need to work. That's what the renewed mind does. The renewed mind is not going to be bitter. I meet so many believers that are so bitter. They're just bitter. And wrath and anger and clamor. That clamor is outcries. And evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, vicious characters. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Be ye kind and tender hearted one to another. You know, I've seen, I used to be on Facebook. I don't have on Facebook anymore. And I just choose not to do it because it was a distraction to me. Because every time I go on Facebook and I read a bunch of comments and I see what's going on, I'm like, this is not building me up. This is not edifying me. I'm out of here. So I just made it. I'm not saying you should be on Facebook. Not on Facebook. You do what you want to do. You know? I just choose not to be on it because it, <laughs> it, it, didn't, it didn't help me in my edification process. So I decided to just withdraw from that. But I could see so much anger. I could see so much... People not kind one to another, not tender hearted, not forgiving one another. And one of the, we're going to see this morning, one of the devices that we give place to the devil is his strongholds that he has on the believer, in the sense of the, especially on the area where he can take you captive, in the area of not forgiving. And we're going to talk about that this morning, okay? So we're back, we back in verse 26, is the second part. Be ye angry and sin not, and let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Yes, you and I believe it. You and I as believers says, be angry. Now this there's righteous anger that we can have. But if you and I look at the anger that we have, a lot of times the anger that we have is not righteous anger. It's just we're angry because normally we get angry because we're not getting our way. And then we get angry. And when we're not getting our way and we get angry, we say things we shouldn't be saying. We talked about that last week, and I'm not going to go into the details of it, but we say something to somebody that those words that has entered that, mind's, that man or woman's mind or child's mind will never go, that's always going to be there, and it's going to sit there, and, if, and if that child or woman or man that has heard those words don't know how to deal with it from the, right, the renewed mind, that will make them bitter and anger, and it just gets escalated. We talked about the various forms of anger. We talked about anger, what anger can affect you physically and your, your immune system and, and depression and, and your shortened life and all these things when you're angry. We meet angry people today. Last week we talked about, you know, we also about, we talked about, I'm not going to talk about it today. You're going to listen to last week's message. We've talked about the Lord Jesus Christ when he, 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 he um, I'm thinking of Afrikaans word now, I'm trying to transliterate here. When he, he, he braided a whip, and the time he must have taken braiding that whip, we were talked about it, you know. He's, it was not just, oh, there's a whip. He braided it, and he looked at these guys. And he was angry with a what? With a cause, with a righteous anger, with a cause. And he dealt with them. Now, I'm not suggesting you and I, when we see some, but sometimes I'm like, Paul, man, I spare you not. I want to come in and just whip somebody, you know. But what we do is we chastise with the word today. We give him the word. We reprove for the doctrine. We reprove for the word of God. And um, I, I spoke in the previous message, I spoke about how we reprove, and if somebody doesn't want to listen and doesn't want to listen to admonition, you put them out. You don't allow sin just to freely reign in your members and in among you in the, in, the, in the ministry. So we talked about Christ and, and that, you know, and that how the new Bible, trans, the new Bible versions leaves out without a cause. So when Christ got angry, oh, he's sinning now. But if you, without, you know, no, it says be angry without a cause. We talked about that last week, and I'm not going to go through all of that again. But he says there in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, 
Be ye angry and sin not. You know, and, 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 and we said Ephesians chapter 6 when it says, Be ye angry. That's not a license for you to be angry all the time. That's not what it's saying. There are things that we can get angry with. And by the way, the anger that is used there is a softer form of anger that he's going to use back in uh, verse 31. Be angry and sin not. 31 is anger with wrath. Okay. But, you know, it's not giving you a license to get angry. Well, I'm angry because the Bible says be angry so I can be angry. What are you angry about? Let's listen to what you're angry about. Well, I'm angry because that guy doesn't want to receive Christ. Why would you get angry about that? You get sad about that. You mourn that. That guy keeps on living in sin. I'm so angry with him. Now we mourn that. And we wanted to prove that. You know? And so... It says, uh, 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 and it says, be angry and sin not. We talked about, we're not going to go through the verses again, but we talked about David um, writing about Moses' anger. Remember what anger that you know, Moses did? He's in the wilderness, and what is these people? They come through the sea. God parts the sea. They come through the sea, go in the wilderness. God feeds him in the wilderness, and then they start murmuring about, what are we going to drink? What are we going to drink? You know? And God says to Moses, speak to the rock. And these people are on yak, 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 yak. Does it make you angry when somebody says yak, 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 yak on you? Now, I know that feeling, you know. You know people are saying, yak, 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 thank you. And so Moses is in that, and God says to Moses, listen, just speak to the rock. And I'm going to bring water out. And this one, you know what Moses does? He doesn't speak to the rock. He comes out and speaks to the people. He says, you, man, you guys, you're going to get what you want. I'm going to smack this rock. You're going to get, he's angry with the people. That caused him not to enter the land. There was a result to anger. So anger has effects. And we have to understand that we're not going to go through that now again. But then he says, don't let the sun, we're going to go on from there, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, your wrath, if you want me to say it a different way. Okay? Interesting that your new Bible version says, be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your anger. But it says, let's not go down upon your what? Wrath. That's different. Don't let it go down upon your wrath. Okay? And so, so whatever anger led you to its effects, the, basically the passage is saying, we need to deal with it. With a renewed mind. You guys get that? We have to deal with it. From a, from, a, from a spiritual manner, from the doctrinal side, from the Word of God, you, you know, when you get to a point where you're going to be angry, and you're so angry, and it's, and it's something that's sitting in your bosom, what do you do with that? You can't deal with it. You need to let the new creature, the new man, who you are in Christ, the Word of God, deal with it in your mind. And so what you do is, when you get to that point where you feel like, I'm not having control over this, say, Lord, I'm struggling with this, this is your word tells me, be angry and sin not. You know, one time I went out, I was called out here to a guy. He was kicking out his wife's front windscreen. This, this is a brother in Christ. He's kicking out his wife's windscreen in a car and breaking stuff. And he's just, he's just, he's just mad. He's so angry. And I'm walking out up to him. And I'm like, oh, this guy's going to beat me up today. He's so angry. He's fuming, man. He's red. And he's just mad. And I'm walking up to him like, Lord, how am I going to deal with this? But I know this guy knows the scripture. And I know he's a new creature in Christ. But he's not acting like the new creature. And I walk up to him and I said, The Bible says, the scripture says, Be ye angry and sin not. And what you're doing right now is sinning. Stop. And he went from that anger this to boom. Right there. Because the word was in him. And, and he, had, you know, he couldn't argue with that. You know, and I, I'll tell you, I'm like, thank you, Lord. You know, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not going to get beat up today. The guy's not going to, you know. Um, so, you know, but, but, but you have to deal with it. You speak to the Lord about that. You, you, you read the scriptures. Okay? And that's why you can't do anything about anger. We can't do anything about anger in our life. If we do not have the renewed mind. 
if we do not put off the old man and we've not put on the new man, which after God is great in righteousness and true holiness, if that man's not put on and we're not renewed in the spirit of our mind, we cannot do anything about our anger. The way you stop lying is the renewed man. The way you stop start working and not stealing is the renewed mind. It's the new man. The way you not get angry and sin and let not the sun go down, it's the new man. It's the issue here. It's the putting on of the new man. It's the issue of the renewing of the mind. It is the issue of us spending our time in the scriptures, in the word, and let it work in us effectually. Without the word of God effectually working in a view, you are powerless. Positionally, you're standing in Christ complete, but in your walk, you're dead. You're dead in the water. Because you are not have the new mind. That's why we say at this church, that's why we say over and over, read the scriptures, spend time. You know, when I speak to people and they have issues, I said, when... How much, tell me about your personal time that you spend in the Word. You know what? They don't have a personal time. They don't have time that they read God's Word. They listen to messages online. They read podcasts, but they're not actually reading the Word. It's different. And so you've got to get into the Word. You need to renew it so you can deal with it. Be angry and sin not, and let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't let anger rest, and I didn't even put this stuff on. Don't let anger rest in your inner man. Because when it's in, it's in there, it's like a canker. It's just going to eat. It's like a little leaven that leavens the what? It was just going to brew in you, and it's going to get out. If you don't deal with it, it's going to destroy you. That's why we have so many bitter, angry, outcries, malice. And that's why we say that there's a focus, and we talked about this last week. The reason why we sometimes get so mad, and you know what, why a lot of people are mad today? What's, what are people mad today about? What, what people are generally mad today about? Politics. You know why you're mad at politics and why you're mad at the president and mad at everybody else and why you go on and it becomes consuming your life? It's because you give your attention to that stuff all day and it consumes you and you get, the more you watch it, you know every time you're going to switch it on, there's going to be something stupid going on. You know it's coming and you're, still, and you're going to let that aggravate you and carry that anger and make it more bitter and more angry and you're just going to escalate that thing over and over. You're going to put that TV on and you're going to get mad again. I used to get angry watching rugby. My wife told me, you need to stop watching rugby, it's not good for you. Because <laughs> like I could do anything about those guys dropping a ball, you know. Then I would get angry and shout at the TV. Now, people doing that at politics today. And what they do is, what they do is when they get angry about stuff, they start twisting the truth and start saying things that's not been said and everything and everything. Anger leads to sin. If we don't deal with it the way God says to be dealing with it. Look at Ephesians. Uh, not Ephesians. Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. We have to deal with it. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath means to deal with it. It's not literally... Sa- it's a good idea to deal... I, I, I used the example yesterday, uh, last, last week, about myself and John that we've been married now 35 years, or is it going 36 years now, right? 36 years, going for 37? Oof, we're getting old, man. Oh, we're going for 37 years now. We've never gone to bed angry with one another. We just didn't do it. Because when we, and, and do we get things where we get angry with one another? Yeah, it happens. But you know what we've always done? Which we've just dealed with it. Yes, Judy, we didn't get go to bed angry, okay? People say to me, you lie. That's a lie. Well, you speak to my wife. We just have to deal with anger. Now, maybe I'm not happy with something she did or said or whatever, but I'm not going to be angry about it. That's a different thing. There's not wrath in my mind. I'm so angry with you. I just can't sleep now. Why did you do that? That's not how the new man deals with things. And Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9 says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be what? 
to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of what? Ha ha! So if you're a guy that's so quickly to get angry, be angry and sin out, and, and you sin, and you're angry, what does anger do? It rests in the bosom of what? Fools. You are foolish if you let anger rest in you. And you're not dealing with it, and you let the sun not go down upon your, you let the sun go down upon your wrath. You foolishly dealing with that. Proverbs chapter 14. Look at Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. And verse 17. Proverbs 14 and verse 17. He that is soon angry dealeth what? Foolishly. And a man of wicked devices is hated. He that is soon angry dealeth what? Foolishly. Are you soon angry? Now there's some people that I've met in my life and I'm like, man, I've never seen them angry. I'm like, you know, and I, I told you last week and I, I confessed and I put the curtain up between, no, I'm not doing that. But I told you last week that I have an anger issue. I had an anger issue. I still have an anger issue if I don't deal with it righteously. If I don't deal with it with a renewed mind. If my mind goes and I start letting anger rest in me, I got angry about something and let it rest in me and let it just eat at me and eat at me. And then something else gets added to it and it starts eating at me. I get to a point where I just, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I don't stop and say, Lord, this is not who I am. This is not what your word says. If I don't get into the word, I would go boom. Okay? And so, I'm, I'm not proud about that. But I, I you know, and, and so that's why I have to spend time in the Word and not deal, and not to be soon to be angry and not deal foolishly with anger, not let it rest in the bosom of my, in my, in, in my bosom, rest anger, rest me, because I'm going to deal foolishly with it. Don't cherish anger and take pleasure in anger. Some people love to get angry. It's just what they do. It's just who they are. Just love to be angry. Don't cherish it. Don't, don't, don't take pleasure in it. Don't harbor a purpose of revenge. You get angry. I'm, I'm, you know, what does the world teach us today? We get even, right? If they, you know, tit for tat. Is that, is that the word, tit for tat? Yeah. Just, you know, that, that means it's going to get even. I'm going to harbor, how am I going to get even with this person? Instead of being harboring in ourselves, Lord, this is not who I am, the renewed mind. I don't want to get even. I want to be forgiving. I want to overlook this person's fault. And I want to forgive them rather and move on towards that. But in, 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 time, in, in the meantime, when it's resting in there, just choose at us. Sometimes things have happened to us many, many, many years ago. <clears throat> And I told you, God, about the renewed mind. This is how it works, the way that I understand it. Can you ever forget something that has happened to you in your past? Where somebody did somebody and they really hurt you, and they did things to you that was evil. Can you ever forget that? No, it's always going to be in our brains. It's always going to be there. So what we do is the renewed mind helps us to take that... And, and it's an issue of a default thing. The more time you spend in the Word, the more time you renew your mind, that the default becomes to the truth of God's Word working in you. It doesn't default to that old thinking process. You have a new thinking process. And sometimes in our minds, we have this event that happened to us, this thing that made us so angry, and it, and it follows us for the rest of our life. It's there. You can't take it away. It can't be gone. It's there. God deals with it, but it's there. And it's like a, a little room in your head. I'm going to make it practical. You have this little room in your bed, and you walk into this house, and there's all these rooms. There's a, there's a room of righteousness. There's a room of you complete in Him. There's a room of the renewed mind. There's a room of, you know, Christ died for my sins. There's a room of the life and the walk I have. And there's this room of my anger, the thing that hurt me. And you have a choice as you walk into that, into that, into that, into that place, to open that door. Once you open that door and you go in, now you're exposed to all those things. And guess what? All those things come back to you. But you had a choice to open that door. 
That's why we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, so that we know how to not to open certain doors. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have the choice to do that, but it's not a good choice. Put on the new man, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, put on the new man, do not be angry and sin. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't cherish it. Don't harbor a purpose of revenge. Go with me to Romans. <clears throat> Romans chapter 12. The longer anger sits there, and the longer it has time to rest in, your, in our inner man, the more it's going to harbor resentment, the more it's going to harbor wanting to get evil, uh, equal, and more wants to, to repay evil for evil and all those various things. That's why we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, transformed by the renewing of our minds. Romans chapter 12, 17. Recompense to no man evil for what? Now is that God's word, yes or yes? So if somebody does evil to me and they make me so angry, do I recompense to them the same thing? Not according to the Bible, right? Not I that said it, it's the Bible that says it. God's word. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. This is, I said this last week, I think I said it last week, but as much as possible, people love this verse, as much as possible, as not much lying in me possible. That tells me just you're not renewed. You're not mature. The more mature you are, more renewed is that you can live peaceably with people. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Who's going to repay? Somebody that does anger to you. It's God's job, not yours. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Wow. That guy made me so angry. That guy hurt me so bad. I'm so angry. Now you want me to feed him? God, what are you doing? No, it's God's word. It says do that. Feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt leave coals of fire on his head. I used to read that verse and says, Ha! If I don't do it, yeah, I'm going to make him so mad and so angry. That's not what the verse is saying. The verse is saying the opposite. When I deal with somebody that has made me so angry or made, uh, 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 done evil with me, I take it to the Lord. I don't get even. I don't have to fight. You know, if you read in history, you, you remember the Crusaders? Around about one, one, 1097 to 1200 and something. For those almost 300 years, they just against the Turkish and the Muslims and fight for the land and it's a, it's, it's a godly cause. And finding a God, because we're not a nation of Israel living and uh, going to go possess the land. This verse was relevant in the first century, in the second century, in the, in the first millennium, and uh, a thousand one hundred after Christ. This verse was still there. It was our instruction in thousand one thousand one hundred. An instruction is not to recompense evil for what? Evil. I was looking at that passage, you know, and it says, you know, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For so doing thou shalt leave coals of fire on his head. And I'm thinking, what an example can we have for that? Heaping coals of fire. How to deal with somebody that's doing that? How do we deal with that? And that's a passage in 1 Samuel. Go back with me with 1 Samuel. Chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. Remember the story of David? As he was up and coming and Saul was king. What did Saul want to do with David when he found out he's going to be the next king? He just want to kill him. You know, threw a javelin at him and all those various things. And his son Jonathan is helping out and, and all these various things is happening. And then David is fleeing and Saul is pursuing. He wants to kill David at all cost. And he's sleeping one night in a cave... And, and, and David creeps into the cave, and what does he do? He has an opportunity to get even with who? With Saul. And what does he do? He doesn't kill Saul. He just takes the piece of the garment, and he's going to take it out. Now look at this passage here in 1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 17 says, or verse 16. And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this th my, thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, 
Thou art more righteous than I. What is he saying? David, you've dealt with me righteously. You're more righteous than I am. For thou hast rewarded me good, whereof I have rewarded thee what? Evil. You didn't pay me the same thing back that I did to you. And thou hast showed, me, showed this day how that thou hast dealt with me, for as much as when the Lord hath delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good, for thou hast done unto me this day. And now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David sware unto Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men get them up unto the hold. So what happens here? David could have killed who? Saul. He doesn't kill with him. He doesn't recompense him evil for what? For evil. What does that do to Saul? It brings shame to Saul. Wow. You dealt with me righteously where I just wanted to kill you. That heaping coals of fire is almost, the way that I almost see it, it's is like you, you, you're embarrassed by not repaying evil for evil. It brings shame. It makes you red in the face. I should have been more kinder. I should have been more righteous. That's when you repay, not repay evil for evil, but you repay evil with good. Okay? So the other guy will be ashamed. So you and I must not recapitulate. Let anger be cherished. Don't let it be inf inflamed by, you know, anger will always be inflamed by reflection. And then when it's inflamed by reflection, it's always going to lead to more sin. Because it's going to make you more angry. And you're going to be angry and what? Sin. Do you guys get that? The book of Proverbs, there's a bunch of verses in the book of Proverbs. Our time is just, let's go read you a few verses. I'm going to read you a few verses there in the book of Proverbs concerning anger. I'll let the word of God speak to you. And I suggest, if you have a problem with anger, if you have an issue with anger, my suggestion to you is to take these Proverbs verses down, all the verses that we've done this week and, and last week, write them down. Put them in your phone and put them somewhere that you can be reminded of these verses. You can look at them on a continuous basis. Renew your mind by some of these things. Proverbs 14 and 24, uh, 29. Now I'm not going to go into the details of it because we don't have the time. But 14.29 says, He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. You're going to deal foolishly. That's the issue we talked about earlier, he that is soon angry dealeth what? Foolishly. He that sloweth, slow, slow to wrath is of great understanding. That tells me understanding comes from where? Where does understanding come from? From the word of God. Wisdom, knowledge and understanding comes from the word of God. Proverbs 15 verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up what? When you fight with an angry man, you're not going to make him less angry. You're just going to make him more angry. So a slow answer, a soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. Verse 18 in chapter 15. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth what? He that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. When somebody wants to fight with you and you don't want to fight back and you just give them a nice kind answer, you almost frustrate them. Because, no, no, I want you to say things to me. I want you to, you know. Somebody was angry with me one time and they walked past me. They walked past me. And this is years and years and years ago and, and they cursed me. And instead of me just walking by and carrying on, I'm like, no. Same to you. <laughs> you know, that, that was just years ago before I understand a lot of things, okay? It's in my flesh. Same to you. Man, I tell you what, I, I kept on walking 
I will never forget this. And the next thing I'm hearing is doof, doof, doof behind me. And we, I'm at a place where there's a lot of cut off woods, uh, wood, pieces of wood, little pieces of cut off wood, but the woodwork shop was lying there. And the next thing, this guy just hammered me from behind. I didn't even know he's up. I just a doof, doof. And the next thing, I'm flying and I'm falling in between this wood and I'm trying to stand up and I'm just sliding. And I turned up to see what's going on. And there's this guy. And by the time I looked out, I see the fist, boom, down. Now I'm trying to stand up, I'm sliding, and he, boom, down. You know, I can't get up. He's just beating me up, you know. If I said nothing and just walked past the guy, I wouldn't have had that beating. But because I said something back to him, I aggravated his anger that he already had to me and made it worse. Instead of just walk on. That was one beating I got, I will never forget, okay? And as much as I was upset with the guy about that, just, you know, later in years I've learned if I just not repaid him evil for evil, I would have been okay. That wasn't the end of the story because he wanted to fight with me outside. When I, by the time I got outside, he was ready to fight me again. Uh, okay, let's move on. 1528. The heart of the righteous studies to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. What does the heart of the righteous do? Study to answer. You see the issue of the renewing in the spirit of our mind, be renewed in the spirit of your mind? You study to answer. Not to get even. Okay? Proverbs 22, 24 and 25. Proverbs 22, 24 and 25. Here's an important one. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. How many of you have people in your life that are angry? That are always furious? How much is that doing for your spiritual well-being? Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. You know what we have to remind it? We need to gather together with believers. We need to have to gather together with the fellowship of the saints, so that we can edify and build one another up. When people are angry around them, you know, when people are angry around about me, you know what I do? If the only thing I hear always about them is this bitterness and anger, I said, you know, I, I talk to them about that, and if they don't want to stop doing it, and they continue doing it, you know what I do? I put them at an arm's length from me. Because I don't need them in my life. It doesn't mean I'm not praying for them. It doesn't mean I don't care for them. It's just not helping me when they're angry. It's not helping me when they're bitter and have outcries, and they don't want to hear, they don't want to acknowledge the truth. Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. He can just allow anything to come in and react to it. You've got to set up those guards, set up those walls, where the doctrine protects you. 29, 20. 29, 20. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words, there is more hope of a fool than of him. Slow to anger, I'm using the, the theme. Hasty in his words. You know, are you the person that's quickly, when somebody says something, you quickly get back? That's what I did. I did the wrong thing. I talked back very quickly. I should not have done that. Verse 22. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Can you see the natural results of sin? An angry man stirreth up strife and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. He aboundeth in transgression. Guess what? If you're furious, you're angry and now you're furious, what's going to happen? The transgression is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now 
Now it comes to the point. Go back with me to go back with me to Ephesians. What is our time? Okay, thank you. Ephesians chapter four. Paul says there, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. We talked about that. Let it, don't let it rest in your bosom. Don't give it the time of day. Deal with it righteously according to the word of God. And then verse 27 says, Neither give place to the what? So if you get angry and sin, and you get angry and you let sin, that the anger sits in your bosom, and, that, and the sun's going to down, go down upon your wrath, you're not dealing with it, you're going to give place to what? To the devil. The context here is not so much the context of wrong doctrines. The context here is the context of how you deal with anger and wrath. Neither give place to the devil. That's the context here. There's other places in the, in the scriptures that talks about the context of doctrine and the devil and, and, and subverting of words and stuff. But here he's dealing about your my attitude towards those that are when we get angry with, with people. And sin and the sun going down. Don't give place to be careful because if it rests in the bosom, it's gonna the transgression is gonna when you get furious and you get mad and you rest them on it and you think upon it and you and you brew and you brew on it, what's gonna happen? It's just gonna get worse. You're gonna give place to the devil because your focus is not on the renewed mind, your focus is on the situation. Why are you angry? Anger is sinful when there is an unforgiving spirit. Now go back with me regarding that. I want to say this. Go back with me to Proverbs 19. There's a verse there that I like. It meant a lot to me, this verse. And I need to give attention to it for myself and my personal life. And I think you can, you can learn from that as well. And Proverbs 19 and verse 11. Proverbs 19 and verse 11. It says, the discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is glory to pass over a transgression. That's a great verse, isn't it? It says, the discretion, that means the wisdom, the prudence of a man, deferreth his what? Anger. You defer your anger, and it's the glory, it is, and, and it is glory to pass over a transgression. Somebody does something wrong, to pass over it. And to have a forgiving spirit about it, because when you do that, you're not giving place to the what? To the devil. And we have to be careful. Go with me to 2 Corinthians. My time's up, but 2 Corinthians. Go with me to 2 Corinthians. There's this guy in the Corinthian church, in 1 Corinthians, that has committed fornication. A type of fornication that is not even common among Gentiles. Among the heathen, among idol worshippers, they don't even do this. But in this church is the man that, 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 that had his father's wife. And the church was puffed up. They should have dealt with it and put it out. But he caused problems there. And so, Paul says, put the man out. When I, my, I'm ready in mind. When I get there, I'm going to put the guy out. And, I, and, and eventually they did that. But this man came back and repented. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10, To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forg forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Why? Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his what? And the issue in the area of forgiveness, when somebody angers and does something to you, and your discretion is to pass over that and rather to forgive. And if you don't do that, Satan, one of his devices is when you cannot forgive. Somebody angered you, hurt you, and did something to you in your life. And that rests in your inner man and rests in your inner person. You never can get rid of it. Satan can use that as one of his devices to get to you. You're giving place to the devil. You're not giving place to the new man. 
This is the issue here, harboring animosity towards somebody else that's caused you pain, grief, or anger with an unforgiving spirit. And we need to be careful because Satan develops strongholds. Paul talks about the weapons of our, of our warfare is not what? Not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. There's some strongholds that we have in us. One of those could be anger, an unforgiving spirit. Our imaginations will run rife with us. It will be vain, empty, it will be useless. Thinking on anger and thinking on you being wronged and wanting to get evil, uh, even. We've got, to get, we've got to get rid of that because it's going to hold us back from who you are in Christ. Because your focus is going to be anger. Your focus is going to be getting even. Your focus is going to be revenge. Your focus is going to be, I just wish, you know, God will wipe him off the face of the earth. For whom Christ died. You can see how anger, why people are so angry. The way to deal with it rightly is to have the word of God renewed, be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Again, Ephesians chapter 4. Be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Put on the new man. Put on the whole armor of God. Take the shield of faith. Whereby you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the what? The wicked. We should not be ignorant of his devices. And what, this is one of the things that's going to get us. I think this passage, go back with me to Ephesians chapter 4, and go with me to Psalms chapter 4. Ephesians 4 and Psalms, the book of Psalms, and we're going to look at Psalm 4. And I'm going to close off here. Because I want to give the ladies some time to do their thing. In Ephesians chapter 4, he says, Be ye angry and sin not. This is not the exact same thing, but I think it's applicable. applicable. And when he says, be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. How do you have to deal with when you get angry? Sin not, right? Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Look at the, uh, Psalm chapter 4 and verse 1. He says, hear me when I call, O God, of thy righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Now I'm, I'm using Psalm 4 as a, as a, as a recipe or as an instruction about how we can deal with an angry issue. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? That means lies and stories. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call upon him. 9 verse 4, there it is. Stand in awe and sin not. Be ye angry and sin not. This passage is not saying, be ye angry and sin not, but it says, stand in awe and what? So where should your focus be? An awe means, with sh when you stand in awe, that the word awe doesn't always just mean, wow. It means also sometimes there is a reverential fear, there's a trembling. Stand in awe and sin not. Know who you and I stand before. We are children of God. We are the new creature. We are in Christ. We are forgiven. We are complete. We have all those benefits to us as members of the body of Christ. And what we need to do is stand in awe and sin not instead of using our time to be angry and sin. What we should do in Psalm chapter 4 is stand in awe and sin not Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Commune with what? Your own heart. How do you do that? You're talking in your inner man with God. You commune with Him. Instead of being angry, rather stand in awe of God and sin not. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust where? In the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time of their corn and their wine increase. The thing is, what God has given us is so much more than the pleasures of life that we enjoy. The peace and the calm, the awe, is a result of what God has given us in His Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and what He is to us. That will cause me not to be a place where I'm angry and sin. 
It's going to cause me to the place where I'm not angry and let not the sun go down upon my wrath. I'm going to deal with people righteously and I'm going to have the righteous God working in me so that I can righteously deal with people. Defer my anger, defer my wrath, defer my revenge. Let the Lord deal with that. And let that give me peace in my inner man. That will let you live longer if you don't have a disease that's going to kill you soon. But it will let you live longer. Because your heart's not going to pump at the rate it shouldn't be. Because when you get angry, what happens? Heart rate goes up. Alright? When you get older, you get start getting my age, and your heart rate goes over, a, there's, a, there's a certain section that they work out that your heart rate should be that, less you doing it. And my heart rate sometimes, you know, when I exercise, it goes, whoosh. okay, there's, you're now in danger zone. Get out of that zone. You can't get it up to that zone. When you get angry, the same thing happens. You stress your heart. You can be depressed. You can let that stuff destroy your spirit in the sense of your person and your conversation that you have in Christ Jesus. Put on the new man, but renew the spirit of our minds. Rest on the Lord. Be ye angry and sin not. Anger has not helped anybody. doesn't build up. Now righteous anger is a different thing. I'm not talking about righteous anger. I'm talking about anger that's now causing us to sin. You know, when my children get something and I get angry, I say, look, I told you not to do that. Don't do that again. And they do it and then I sort them out. I told you last week and sometimes when I had to sort them out, I get so angry that now because I'm, I'm not getting my way with them and I'm not dealing with them righteously, I have to walk away because I will hurt them if I don't do that. When you're all susceptible to that. And so that's why Paul says and deals with these various things. You know, steal no more. Don't lie. Don't be angry and sin. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't give place to the devil. Don't do all these things. The only way you cannot do those things and that all bitterness and anger and wrath and clamor and evil speaking be put away from us is by the renewed man. The spirit a renewed spirit, uh, by the renewing of our inner man and the spirit of our minds. That's the only way that we can deal with that stuff and not deal with that. That's why we have to get into the Word. If you don't spend time in God's Word and you don't ever, you know, hardly ever read God's Word. This morning when you came to church, you're going to have to find your Bible because you put it down there some last Sunday when you got home. You put it somewhere in the, in the, in the, and now this morning, where did I put it down? because you haven't touched it for the last week or just it for the last few days, you need to really think about getting God's Word and reading it more. Make sure the Word of God is somewhere around you. Make sure you have your Bible with you, your sword with you. Right? Because otherwise, if you don't get the renewing of your mind, if you're going to rather switch on CNN or Fox... That's not going to renew your mind. That's just going to make you more angry. You don't want to get angry and sin. You want to be built up. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you for your marvelous, wonderful grace. We thank you that we can deal with these things in our lives that the old man dealt with and had. And thank you that you've liberated us from sin by, the, by, by in the sense of our, 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 that sin cannot have dominion over us that we can stand fast in liberty with Christ has made us free. Thank you for your word that affectionately works in us and as we are renewed in the spirit of our minds that we can deal with these very issues that we have trouble with on a day-to-day -day basis. Because you enable us and your word affectionately works in us that believes. As we pray these things, thanking you for the saints and for all this ministry here and this church here and um, we thank you for your all-sufficient grace for us as we pray this by Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.